Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Only Murders in the Building, Season 3. So if you haven't watched Season 1 or Season 2 or this Season 3, um, spoilers, heavy spoilers. Um, I don't even know why you would listen to this podcast if you wanted to get spoiled on it. So this is complete spoilers. And, and, and this season has been out for a while, all right? It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm saying anything that's been like brand spanking new okay this season has been out there for quite some time so if you haven't watched it yet go watch it now i must say this season took me a while to watch it wasn't like the uh, the past two seasons where it was like oh you know super quick and intriguing right like it took some time it wasn't all i couldn't binge watch it i, I mean i could have but I couldn't have, you know what I mean? It was so there was so much to to watch during last year. I, I've been wanting to talk about this this season, but it never felt like the right time. And there was always something else coming out. You know, there was a there was a lot of anticipation. There were a lot of other things I was watching. And I was kind of in between things, and I was trying to find the time to watch it. But then I would watch one episode, and I'd be like, yeah. But I, as intrigued as I you know would have been, it's just like the next episode. I was just kind of like. Can we pick up the steam here? Can we, you know, can we not dance around or bounce back and forth? Can we just like figure this out quickly? But, you know, it takes some time, you know what I mean? They have to give us some more clues and whatnot. But first, first, I want to talk about Paul Rudd. All right. Paul Rudd really came through. Paul Rudd did a great job of, I mean, he's, he's uh, always such a very likable person. And then in this one, he's trying to not be, but you can kind of, you know, I feel like Paul Rudd's reputation precedes him. You know what I mean? It's like, he's a very good guy. He's a very nice guy. He's a very funny person. So to see him be like this mean character is kind of like, okay, he's trying to act a little bit, but it's more of like they're forcing it, you know? But anyways, there was also, um, what is it? So he's, you know, he's out there doing that. And he did a great job in this season of being, I don't want to say like a, bad guy i mean he is but he isn't you know what i'm saying but he does a good job of like of being you know kind of like a a character that you're like oh he's just a little you know yes he's a bit of a jerk you know no no offense but it's like he kind of like oh that's that's the character it is what it is and he has to die blah 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 so anyways Paul Rudd, he dies in the beginning of it, and he doesn't die in the building. And so, because he doesn't die in the building, I was just kind of like, okay, so now it's a different building, right? It's in uh, Stephen, uh, no, Martin Short's play, and because of that, it's like a whole new building, right? Now it's a whole new investigation. It's a whole new place to explore. But then, it turns out, the man is alive. Like he lived. Like he's okay. Like he's he survived. He's not completely dead. You know what I'm saying? He's he's still flourishing. He's still doing his thing. So I was surprised by that. I was like, oh snap! So that whole him dying right there on the stage, like that's a that's a new thing. And then when he sh when they showed him alive, I was like, surely he knows who killed him, right? Like he knows. So. I was like, okay, so where do they go from here? And then they kill him again. So he dies twice in this, all right? He dies once on stage, comes back to life, and then they kill him again in the elevator shaft, uh, down the elevator thing. So because of that, it was just really... I felt like that was a good way to, to start the season. I felt like that was a great way to begin things. I don't, I don't know. I mean, is that really like a... A murder mystery trope where like the person dies and they come back to life and then they die again i'm sure it is right like they die or they fake die right and then they come back to life to get their vengeance but then maybe they fail again or whatever i feel like there's something in there there's something there it, it's it's part of the whole thing but anyways he dies again and now it's up to martin short steve martin and Selena Gomez, I can't remember their their character names. Um, I know Mabel. Um, I, 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 I can't remember the other ones. But anyways, 
the they get back together they have to work on their they have to make their podcast they have to make their podcast happen again and it seems like the podcast initially was a good idea um i mean it was like the big thing between them right like they listened to it but now i don't know it's it lost some of the juice um and especially in this season there's not much of a I mean, Selena Gomez really pushes the, on the podcast because I, that's her bread and butter. But the other two, they kind of fall short of it. And they're not really as invested as they were in like the first season of like doing the podcast. You know what I mean? Like in the first season, they were like doing character uh, characterizations and they were like adding inflections into the way that they spoke. And they had to record people for their podcast. Like it made... It made sense then, but now it's just kind of like not that anymore. You know what I mean? It's not um, what you what 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 you call it? It's not um, it's not at the fo- front and focus. You know, it's not front and center for them to kind of not speak on, but just kind of like you don't see them behind the microphone anymore. You know, you just kind of assume that like, oh, they talk about it on their podcast, blah, 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 blah. And they give you the facts after the fact. You know what I mean? After everything happens, then they explain like, oh, this is what happened. We have to explain this. We have to do that. And I feel like the the main focus was um, Martin Short's play, the the baby thing. The babysitter, the I'm forgetting the name. But it, it was focused on that. The majority of it was focused on that. So, I don't, I don't want to say that Steve Martin and Martin Short kind of, I'm not saying that they were bad, but it was just kind of like, I feel like their motivations weren't, were all over the place. Again, I feel like Selena Gomez's character really focuses the show on like the murder mystery of it and Martin Short's more preoccupied about oh, this happened, you know, to my play. I got to figure this out. And then Steve Martin's like has his new girlfriend and he kind of mixes into it. He's kind of back and forth. He's like, I don't want to be a part of the play. But then he's like, I want to be in the play. So they kind of like do a whole mix, mix of a, a back and forth here and there, which is whatever, fine. But I feel like the one who was most invested or most like, this is what's going to happen and this is how it should be, you know, was Selena Gomez's character. Um, she really focused on making the podcast happen and the fans and keeping up with the murder mystery and whatnot. So then, so then, Meryl Streep is in this season of Mur- Only Murders in the Building. Now, I thought that was a huge, like, arrow towards Meryl Streep because I was like oh Meryl Streep's the killer like boom right away I was like Meryl Streep's the killer case closed like I don't you know we don't need to think about anything else it has to be Meryl Streep like I I, because this was my my thinking okay I was like of course Meryl Streep's the killer why would they it's Meryl Streep why would you waste Meryl Streep's time on like a good character right like why would you waste her time Okay, it's not fun to be like a re- regular person. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not fun to just be, "Oh, I'm just a a regular, you know, uh, actor and perform." I, she she did great job on that beginning monologue at the audition. I felt like she did a great job on that. And then she did a great job at the the musical parts as well. But what I'm trying to say here is that it's Meryl Streep, okay? And th- I was like they're for sure not going to waste Meryl Streep on anything less than like an evil character. How often do you see Meryl Streep in like an evil role where she's like a murderer? You never, you never see that, right? You obviously never see her um, be that kind of a person. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like, it's perfect. She's the killer. They, they arrest her, throw her in jail. You know what I'm saying? And because they arrest her and they throw her in her jail, she'll never come back. So it's like a perfect, it's a perfect way to, to get Meryl Streep in there and then take her out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the best way to do it. I felt like that was, that was a, the reason why she was going to be the killer. 
Because it's I, I was just like, there's no way they're wasting her, and there's no way they're gonna get her back for another season. Like that's a that's a commitment that she doesn't really does need or like has to do. I feel like that would be a waste of her potential. You know, she has like another movie or another project that she's passionate about. So she gets in, she gets out, she's the murderer, she's the killer, she experiences it, and then she dips, right? That was my thinking. That's why I thought that she would be the killer. Um, but, you know, they they got one over on me. They they tricked me. They they made me believe. I didn't care what was going on the whole season. As soon as I saw Meryl Streep in there and they like gave her some motivation, I was like, she's definitely the killer. I don't know anybody else who would want to kill Paul Rudd. Of course Meryl Streep would want to kill Paul Rudd. She's obsessed with him. Her, you know... Her son is like their brother, you know, like their their sister and whatnot. And he's mean to the assistant. And it's like all this whole big juggle. So I was just like, yeah, it's obviously her. How does she do it? But um, yeah, that didn't happen. You know, that there, there was definitely some motivation there. There was definitely some some connection to her in an obsession with him and trying to get close to Paul Rudd. But it wasn't really Paul Rudd she cared about. She wanted to get to her actual son who's like the brother or like the adopted younger or older brother. I can't remember. But he's like the assistant, so to speak. And she's his mom because she gave him up for adoption so that way she could pursue acting. And she's been all over the place ever since. And she kind of has a relationship with Martin Short throughout the whole thing. And I was just kind of like... You know, I was just like, oh, like they're doing the same thing they did to Steve Martin. They're doing to, you know, they're doing to her. Uh, I mean, they're doing to him, to Martin Short. So I was just kind of like, okay, like we've we've seen this before. This has happened before. So that that's why it is what it is. Um, but going on forward, I feel like revealing the, I feel like revealing who actually did it kind of well this is a you know this is i'm obviously spoiling this whole thing so anyways it was the mother and the son duo it was the producers of martin short's play that killed paul rudd now it was a duo okay it was a duo i'm trying to remember what exactly so it was in the cookie i know it was in the cookie but I'm forgetting how she gave it to him. I know she the, the mom gave it to him, but I don't know how she gave it to him. M maybe it was um it wasn't by accident. She she meant to do it. No, no, no. She had the cookie, put rat poison on it, and then gave it to him as she, as uh put it in his dressing room, maybe? And then it was just sitting there. No, she didn't offer to him. She put it in the dressing room, put the rat poison on it, left. No, I'm I'm completely forgetting how she poisoned the cookie, but she poisoned the cookie. He ate it because he's been trying to avoid sweets, right? Trying for this role, trying to get in good shape and whatnot. And then as he does that, the next thing that follows is, um, well, the son. So he dies on stage. But he's brought back to life because of food po the food poisoning, right? They they pumped his stomach and they got all of the poison out of his system. So he was kind of like relieved. And it wasn't any one particular person who tried to like stab him or poison him, right? It was that cookie and he didn't really know who, you know, who could have poisoned it f for him. So then he's at the top of the elevator and I guess he's kind of talking smack to the son about the mom no he finds out that the mom poisoned him and then the son was like i'm going to protect my mom or you've been saying some mean things about my mom or you are mean to everybody and you're a bad person and yada 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 and pushes him and then he falls through the elevator crashes down and dies and then the son kind of like runs away so he gets away with it well, not gets away with it. I'm, I think they go to jail. They go to jail, right? I'm trying to remember. Or at least the son does. The mom half tried to kill him. I, I guess attempted to kill him. I don't think it was like a 
an actual murder, but he definitely, he def, they're both definitely accomplices in this whole thing, right? She tried to kill the Paul Rudd, and then he act, and then the son actually killed Paul Rudd. I don't know. I don't remember if they both go to jail or for just, just the son. But I know somebody pays the pays for the crime, you know. And that is what it is, you know. It happens, and I mean, not for nothing, but you know, cool. You know, glad that they um, what's it called? Glad that justice has been served for Paul Rudd, because you no, know, don't get me wrong. He's a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't all that much likable than other people but i don't know and i always feel bad for the people who died you know like season two when i saw bunny die i was just kind of like oh and uh, because they showed us like a day in her life and i was just kind of like why would they want me to connect with this person who i really don't you know she's already dead like it felt sad because it was like oh man she she still had some good years left. She was passionate about the building. She really wanted to like stick with it. And it was just upsetting that um, she had to go that way. It was so sad. But that's life, you know. You look into anybody's life or see them for actual people, then you're actually you're going to be like, oh, that's so sad that they passed away. They shouldn't have died, you know. And I guess my empathy towards them is kind of the reason why I'm like, darn it, like... They shouldn't have died. But hey, it is what it is. It happens. So then they figure it out, right? And then they do Martin Short's play. Martin Short and Meryl Streep are together. Steve Martin has his girlfriend. Mabel is dating that other dude, right? Like they they have that thing going on or whatever. So then... They're celebrating, or they're they're getting the party together, or they're doing whatever. And Jane Lynch's character, who is like the double to Steve Martin, right? Like, he had that TV show, and she would play his stunt double, or like as a background extra, and they would like... Essentially, they would mix back and forth, is what I'm trying to say. Is she... Her character was mainly based off of him. So she would like move like him, try to talk like him and figure out like his mannerisms and try to breathe as he would, right? Being the real character, you know, by pretending to be him. So at the end of the season, when they solve the crime, the mystery is over, they're celebrating, they're popping champagne, they're in the new apartment, they're in the building, they're having a good old time, they need some more champagne or another bottle of wine. So Jane Lynch's character goes up there and decides, I don't, I'm going to go get it. You guys stay here at the party. She goes upstairs and then guess what happens? Boom. Or pew. Dead. Somebody shot her through the window into his apartment. And there she is. Gunshot to the chest? I don't remember if it was to the head or to the chest, but gunshot to the chest. I'm just going to say to the chest. Shot and bleeding. And I think about to die. I don't know if they actually... No, they have to kill her. They have to. They have to kill Jane Lynch. So they kill her. But the where the twist comes in is that... They were obviously going for Steve Martin. They were going for him. But why go after him? What has he done? What enemies has he made? You know? Obviously he's made some enemies. But who could it have been? Was it somebody in the building? Was it somebody outside looking for a ven- You know, looking to, to get at him? For his past? What What could have happened? So they shoot Jane Lynch, but they were actually trying to shoot Steve Martin. But because she's a body double, all they could tell was, and she's like perfect at copying his every movement, every every move, right? She was able to like mimic him so perfectly, so effortlessly. She was such a great actress. She was such a great actor, you know, like him, to mimic him, to be the character. So it's just really funny to see... To see that they were going for Steve Martin, but they actually killed Jane Lynch. And it's sad too, you know, very, very sad. But anyways, 
why would they be going for Steve Martin? There has to be something more there. There has to be another angle. Or maybe it's sins from the past. Maybe it's um, the, the murderer from the first season, his girlfriend from the first season. Or maybe it's somebody else. It's always it's always somebody else. It's always they're probably going to add some new characters in the third season, um, but it's hard to imagine or think who could who could kill him. It's definitely got to be somebody new. I can't think of any any like, and you know you you can't really think about anybody who would want to kill him at this point, except for the original killer. Or like the the first his ex girlfriend she has to be involved in this, but I don't know. Hmm. Too much speculation about the next season. But it's sad. It's really sad. And I also think that they should release a real podcast. Like there should be there should be a podcast of them like doing the whole thing. Or maybe there is, and it's just like I don't know, hidden or. You have to pay extra for it, maybe? Maybe that's like the the new thing. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. It's got to be... No, because I remember I was thinking about like trying to look for the podcast, trying to see if like there was a thing that they do, but they don't do it. It's just like all fictional for the show, which is fine. That's cool. But I was just kind of like, they're not going full all the way with this but whatever so season four i'm looking forward to it I, I you know i feel like this last season even though it took me a while to like get through everything or like to really like watch it usually i i do like to binge watch them because then it like it feels like i get through it it all in like one go but you know taking it little by little episode by episode it kind of keeps me on my toes or it makes me work on my memory because it's like, oh yeah, last last episode this happened or this happened also last episode. So it's not always like um, all at once and then you forget all about it. It's kind of like little by little, which is, you know, that's that's what shows do. That's what shows are for, right? You watch a little bit and then hopefully your memory retains what you can. Or they give you, they usually give like a, a an update on the last episode. So it'd be like previously on only murders in the building. So they'll give you like a breakdown of what happened last episode, which is good. I like that. But this season four, man, it, it really does bother it. it. Look, because in season three, they made some hints toward who could kill Paul Rudd, right? Because they had Steve Martin talking, um, talking to him and he was like, I hate you. Or like, when this is all over, I'm going to, you know, I don't like you or you're a terrible person or whatnot. And then Paul Rudd goes on stage and then he dies. And then Martin Short's the head of the production. And then there's like all the other actors and characters involved, right? Like we we had like some sort of like, oh, maybe Steve Martin did this. You know, there were some theories on that. But now there's no, there's none of that, right? There's no. And at the end of season two, they made it seem like Selena Gomez killed Bunny. But that wasn't the case, right? Like, it was it was all made to look that way, but it didn't actually happen. So now, I feel like on this season four, it's a lot more anonymous. So that way they can bring in new characters and new people from, like, Steve Martin's past. Or, you know, from the old days or whatnot. I don't know, it's very tricky, the way that they try to give us suspects. Because I don't remember, you know, I, yeah, it's definitely going to be new, new special guests on season four. Because I remember they brought, like, all of Selena Gomez's friends. They brought uh, Cara Delevingne onto the show. They brought, um... Paul Rudd's also a good friend. Meryl Streep. Um, I'm trying to think who else. They're, they're, you know, they, they just typically bring on her her friends. 
You know, they bring on people who are like friends of hers onto the show to do the show, to act in it and have fun and whatnot. Um, I'm not overly sure who they could bring on next season with like real motive to kill. But, you know, we I guess we never know. But why kill Steve Martin? I guess the number one thing would be who wasn't at the party or like who who would be outside or maybe they were inside no cuz the window was broken so they had to be outside on top of the building looking in watching the apartment and then shooting at it waiting for him to get home hmm it's all over the place but season 4 i'm looking forward to it um, I hope you guys are too. If you if you watch it, you know if you just don't really care all that much about it, um, you know, hey, it's a good show. I feel like you would be really invested in it. But anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.